makes you move, makes you shout, makes you cry because it's real. I've got my head in the master's head and my soul's been anchored in Jesus' name. I'm free from sin and I know I'm born again. Lift your hands and praise the risen Savior that we serve. Oh, somebody needs to praise him. You need 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 to praise him. And you need to praise him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy God he is. Thank you, Lord. I wish I had somebody just tell him that you love him. Just tell him that you love him. Just tell him that you love him. Tell him that you love him. Tell him that you love him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Lift up 
Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Don't be afraid. 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 Don
everybody but Jesus. Oh, I know you can do better than that. Come on, everybody. Ooh, nobody but Jesus. Oh, say it like you mean it. Ooh, nobody but Jesus. Listen. Who can heal your body? Who can save your soul? Who can take your life? Who can make it home? Nobody but you. Nobody but Jesus. Can I get a witness? Ooh, nobody but Jesus. This is my testimony. Listen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You know I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Yes, I said, Ooh, nobody but Jesus. Oh, I like that over there in that corner now. Hey, I said, Ooh, But Jesus, come on, say it again. Come on, Ooh, nobody but Jesus. Hey, one more time. Ooh, nobody but Jesus. When the devil comes standing, you toe to toe. You tell that devil, get out of your face. Mm, nobody but Jesus. I say that there's power in the name of Jesus. Ooh, power in the name of Jesus. Can y'all say that? Come on. Ooh, power in the name of Jesus. Come on, young folk. Where the young folk at? Come on. Ooh, nobody but Jesus. Oh, you only young, however your mind say so. Come on, everybody. Ooh, yeah, nobody but Jesus. Now we're gonna say it so Jackson can hear. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, not fear but Jesus. Jesus, not doubt but Jesus. Jesus, not fear but Jesus. Jesus, not doubt but Jesus. Jesus, not sickness but Jesus. Jesus, not death but Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Shake hands with somebody. Tell them Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 your finances, Jesus, 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 Jesus,
You'll come and sing that one song that, that you sung this morning, and hallelujah, then we'll receive the evening tithe and offering. But I just think about it. Oh, somebody give Jesus a hand. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, long as I've got King Jesus. Sisters, I want you to put your hand on your hip. And brothers, I want you to point like you're about to tell somebody else. In other words, I want you to get an attitude with it. You, you know how you mothers and you sisters are. When you, mothers, when you get ready to fuss at your kids, you say, now, I done told you. That's your warfare position. Mama mad now when she put her hands on the hip. When daddy go walking fast, you in trouble now. I want you to get an attitude in here with your praise and let the devil know he's in trouble. And your testimony tonight is long as I've got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Clap those hands, everybody. Come on. Come on, clap them. Make some noise up in the house of the Lord. Hey! They didn't lie on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, rebuked, scorned, talked about, show as you're born. You've been up, down. Almost level oh. to the ground, but long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, don't need no come on, quiet. Well, I've been lied on, cheated, cheated, talked about, mistreated, rebuked, scorned, talked about, show as you born. I've been up, come on, down, almost level to the ground, but long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. I don't need nobody else. I don't need don't need nobody shame. Nobody else. Don't need mother, father, sister, brother, doctor, 
lawyer, preacher, teacher, just as long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus, don't need nobody else. I don't need nobody else. Say that to me. I don't need nobody else. Lawyer, preacher, teacher, justice. Long as I got King Jesus. 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 I know he's a burden bearer. I know he's a heavenly shower. Good God is a bridge over water. He'll be a doctor and a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got Jesus. I got him. Jesus, he's a lily of a valley. He's a great I am. He walks with me. Talk to me. Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, my provider. He walks with me. Jesus, I love him long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. Don't need nobody. Come on. Hey. Come on, choir. Hey. I don't, I don't need nobody else as long as the Lord is on my side because if God be for me who can be against me or you ought to remind yourself if God or you need to think about that thing as long as God is before me who can be against me amen how many have a, have a testimony tonight amen I have a testimony I don't know about you, but I have a testimony. Amen. Well, as I look back over my life, oh, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Well, as I look back over my life, oh, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Well, now, sometimes I couldn't see my way through. But the Lord, he brought me out. Well, right now I'm free. I've got the victory. I've got a testimony. Well, as I look back over my life, oh, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Well now, sometimes I couldn't see my way through, but the Lord, he brought me out. Well, right now I'm free. I've got the victory. I've got a testimony. Well, as I look back over my life, oh, and I think things over, I can truly say that I Bless, I have a testimony. I have a testimony. The Lord has been good to me. I said He brought me a long, long way. I said He healed my body and He saved my soul from sin. He put the Holy Ghost within. I gotta tell somebody, oh, what God has done for me. I have a testimony, I have a testimony, I said God's been good to me, I said God's been good to me, I have a testimony, I have a testimony, oh a testimony, 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 testimony. Testimony. Well, he picked me up, turned me around, put my feet on the high ground. If you don't believe I've been redeemed, follow me down to the John tree. Stepped in the water, the water was cold. Chew my body, but not my soul. When did things happen when I came through? Turned on down the Holy Ghost to have a testimony. I said, God's been good to me. I said, it saved my family. And he healed my body. Makes me feel like shouting, 
makes me feel like dancing I gotta tell somebody Oh, what God has done for me I have a testimony I said God's been good to me I said God's been good to me Oh, God's been good to me I have a testimony Testimony, 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 testimony. Well, he picked me up, turned me around, put my feet on a higher ground. If you don't believe I've been redeemed, follow me down to the drunk stream. Stepped in the water, the water was cold. To my body, but not my soul. What do you think happened when I came through? Turn on down the Holy Ghost, well, the testimony. A testimony. I've gotta tell somebody. I've gotta tell somebody. I've gotta tell somebody. Oh, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Well, as I look back over my life, oh, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Well, as I look back over my life, oh, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Here that's got a testimony. Are there anybody here that God's ever done anything for? Are there anybody here that God ever answered one prayer for? If there's anybody of the Lord, let's give Jesus a hand praise. Amen. I thank the Lord for being here on tonight. I thank God, amen, for the, the dynamic duo pastors that you have. Amen. The founder, amen, Pastor uh, Jimmy Dobbs and uh, your pastor, Pastor Steve Dobbs, and this great church, and the First Lady, and the, all the saints of God, and all the new brothers and sisters that I've met here since I've been here. This is my first time to Jacksonville, Florida, and I tell you, it's just like home. Somebody say amen. While you're resting on your feet, I want to sing a song that Jesus will make a way out of no way. When you feel our hope is gone, amen. Tell somebody, don't you worry. Jesus will make a way out of no way. Come on, put those hands together. A little bit more track. Let me tell you that Jesus, come on, will make a way out of when you feel in. And let me tell you that Jesus will make a way when you feel you're all alone. Jesus is the best friend. He hears me when I kneel and pray. He will make a way out of nowhere. Let me tell you that Jesus, yes, he will. When it feels like our hope is gone. Let me tell you that Jesus, come on. I will make a way. All alone. Don't let trials, don't let trials get you down. Jesus is the best friend I have found, and He hears me when I kneel and pray. He will make a way out of no way. I remember when I was young, growing up in Michigan. On Saturdays, my family, we would all gather around and pray. My mother would be there. I could hear her in her prayer saying, out of nowhere. Listen, I was walking down Woodward Street, a lady I didn't meet. And I wondered why she had tears in her eyes. I didn't hesitate to say that he'll make a way out of nowhere. He will make a way out of 
know it. Let me tell you that Jesus, he said that he'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will make a way. Oh, Jesus, he promised in his word that he will make a way. He will. He will make a way. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus will make a way. I don't know, no way. Yes, He will. He will make a way. Jesus, come on. He will make a way. I want it to, want it would. Jesus, come on. He will make a way. I want it to, want it do it. I said, Jesus. He said that he would. I want to do it, I want to do it. Yes, he will. He will make a way. Listen. If there's no window, and if there is no door, if there ain't a crack in the wall, God will make a door. He said that he will make a way out of every temptation. Whatever you're going through tonight, I'm here to let you know that God will, I know he will make a way. I want to do it, I know he will. Won't he do it? He will make a way. Through danger seen and unseen, he will make a way. Through the midnight hour, he will make a way. Yeah, Jesus. I know for myself that he will make a way, he will make a way, oh, I know that the Lord will make a way, I don't know, no way, yes, he will, he will make a way. Come on, clap those hands and tell your neighbor, God will make a way, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you may be seated if you can. Amen. My name is Frederick Barr. I am from Nashville, Tennessee. I was born and raised in Pontiac, Michigan. And uh, I pastored my wife and I together in Nashville at the Power of Deliverance Tabernacle. And when my mother was carrying me in her womb, it was prophesied over her through the late A.A. A. Allen that she was carrying a prophet. And she shouted and danced all around that big saw dust tent. And she was about eight or nine months pregnant with me. And one of the nurses came to my mother and said, did you hear what the man of God said? Did you hear what the man of God said? You're carrying a prophet. You're carrying a prophet. And my mother cried, and she said, I heard what the man of God said. It was two things God was saying. Number one, that I was a boy. And number two, my mission for life. God has a purpose and destiny for your life. And I want to encourage you on tonight that not only does God have a plan, but the devil is trying to alter the plan that God has for you. The Bible tells us not to be ignorant concerning the devil's devices. You've got to know that we are living in the last days. Look over at somebody and point your little finger at them and tell them, you living in the last days. Now, some of you may feel as though that you're in the prime of your life. Some of you may say, well, I already know that. I'm already knocking 100. Hallelujah. And some may say, but I'm just a kid. I, I, I'm not old enough to drive. But you are living in the last days. God gave us a shine in the word of God. He said that in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh how many know that we're living in a time that anybody that want to receive god they are receiving it hallelujah the bible said that in the last days that many would fall from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils we got more people that have been saved for 20 30 and 40 years are backsliding now are giving up on god now when you should be holding on 
more than you have ever held on in your life. Why are people falling by the wayside? Why are they giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? It is because we're living in the last days and the devil knows this is the last go round before Jesus comes back. How many has ever been in a fight? And you know it, the fight got to a point that if you didn't give your all in all, you was going to lose the fight. Hello, now, anybody ever been, I mean, in a real fight. I ain't talking about no tug of war. Well, even that, 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 that counts, too. You realize, you, you know, you, you first start off, you're trying your opponent's strength. When you realize how strong they are, you say, no, wait a minute now. And you got to put some more mm into it. Well, the devil realized that we're living in the last days, and he does not have long. So, therefore, he's fighting the, the body of Christ more than he's ever fought you in your life. That's why you're dealing with demons and devils and spirits and your flesh is rising up more than you ever would have thought that it would. When stuff should be in the grave, you're like Abraham and Sarah. You got a problem. Somebody say glory to God. But I'm here to let you know tonight to be encouraged because God has a way of escape. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Kings, the 20th chapter, and we're going to begin our reading at the first verse. And while you're turning your Bibles there, we're going to offer a word of prayer unto the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come in for your presence right now. We ask for your spirit and your anointing upon this word. Let it fall afresh upon the body of Christ. Let us not walk out this, this church living the same way, doing the same things. Father God, we ask for the spirit of revival, the spirit of rejuvenation in the name of Jesus. Devil, you take your hand off the body of Christ. You take your hands off my brother and my sister. In the name of Jesus, you take your hands off the young people we do not belong to you for we are the property of jesus christ and if you agree with that word of prayer i want you to shout amen, amen. glory to god first kings the 20th chapter and we're going to begin our reading at the first verse and ben hadab the king of syria gathered all his hosts together and there were 30 and 2 kings with him and horses and chariots and he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it and he sent messengers to Ahab king of Israel into the city and said unto them thus saith Ben Hadab thy silver and thy gold is mine thy wives and also thy children even the goodest are mine and the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh Ben Hadab, saying, Although I sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children, yet I will send my servants into thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. I want you to, tell, I want you to tell, let your neighbor know that the devil has served notice. Y'all talk back to me. I'm a southern preacher. <laughs> the devil has served notice. Not only does he want the wives, the children, the silver, and the gold. That's the first charge that the king, uh, Ben-Hadab, had stated. The second time, he sent a second message. And the second message is, not only am I interested in your external possessions, but I want your house. I want my servants to come in your house and whatever they want, you shall give it to them. Kind of sound like somebody's about to die to me. What happens when loved ones die? People that ain't been in the house come in and say, oh, I sure do like that vase. I told her in 1942 when she bought that vase. When anything ever happened to you, I want that vase. Maybe y'all don't know anybody like that. Hello now. Glory to God. So the king has sent out this second decree. Seventh verse. And the king of Israel called the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeth mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives and for my children and for my silver and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto nor consent. Don't listen to him and don't agree with him. 
Wherefore he said unto the messenger of ben, uh, uh, ben Hadab, Tell my lord the king all that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first I will do. But this thing I may not do. And the messenger departed and brought him the word again. And then Adab sent him and said, The gods do, say, do so unto me. And more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffer for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let him not that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. But it came to pass when Ben-Hadab heard this message as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilions that he said unto thy servants, set yourselves in array and set thy, themselves in array against the city. And behold, there came a prophet. Tell somebody, and there came a prophet. And this is the part I want to get to on tonight. And there came a prophet unto Ahab, the king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast seen all this great multitude, but I will deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And Ahab said, By whom? He said, Thus saith the Lord, Even the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall order the battle? And he answered, Thou. But he numbered the young men and the princes of the provinces, and they were 232. And after them he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel, even being 7,000. Now here, Ahab only had 7,200 people. Somebody say amen. And they went about at noon, and, but Ben-Hadab was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, and 32 kings that helped him. And the children and the young men of the province, uh, of the princes of the province, went out first. And then Hadab sent out, and he told them, saying, There are men come out of Samaria. And he said, Whether they be come out for peace, take them alive. Or whether they be come out for war, take them alive. So these young men of the provinces, of the, uh, the princes of the provinces, came out of the city, and the army which followed them, and they slew every one of his men, and the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on horse with the horsemen. And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots, and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest at the return of the year of the king of Syria will come up against thee. I notice a lot of reading, but I'm getting to a point. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto them, Their gods are the gods of the hills. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, their gods. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Their gods are the gods of the hills. Therefore, they were stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms. Now, notice what's going on here. The king of Syria tell his men, don't worry about the children of Israel. Because their God is the God of the hills. Or their God is the God of the mountain. But their God is not the God of the valley. Are you listening to what I'm saying tonight? The devil is talking about you. The devil is saying concerning you. Don't attack them while they're in church. While they're dancing and praising God and they're on the mountaintop. But wait until their money gets funny. Wait until they're feeling a little low. Wait until it seems as though that all hope is gone. Then attack them. Somebody say amen. And this is what the king uh, Abinadab has said. Their God is the God of the mountain. Now somebody say, well, where did he get that from? If you turn your Bibles to the book of Judges, the first chapter, and we read and we see the story here in the first verse that Joshua is dead. And now Joshua is dead, and the children of Israel, they are getting ready to enter into a battle. And when you get over to the, uh, I believe it's the 19th verse, 
Somebody say amen. amen. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of fire. So history told Ben-Hadab, ben don't fight the children of Israel in the mountain. How many know that when you got your praise on, the devil can't touch you? You know that when you're glorifying God, that ain't nothing the devil can do or say to you to stop you from trusting God. Well, see, it's easy to fight when, when you're on the mountaintop. But when you get down low and the odds are against you, can you fight? Somebody say amen. Can you stand up and testify then? Can you stand up and talk about the goodness of the Lord when you're two or three months behind in your house note or you're two or three months behind in your, in your car note or you lose your job? Hello now. Or if you're sick in your body and the doctor said that there's nothing else they can do for you. Can you praise God then? Can you praise God then when you've done your best for all your children and your loved ones and yet they still go to the crack house and to the whole house? Hello now. Can you still praise God then? Can you still praise God when you've done all that you can do and you can't seem that you can do muster up any more strength to do any more than what you've already done? Can you still praise God? You've got to learn to praise God in spite of. It doesn't matter how much work is before you. You've got to praise God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how much pressure you may feel as though that you're under. You still got to praise God. Glory to God. See, you must understand what was going on in this time. The children of Israel, they were coming out of Egypt and they were going over into the promised land. Moses has died. Joshua has died. Now they're getting ready to possess the land. And what does God, God gives instructions, amen, to, uh, to the people and tell them to send Judah first. Now we all know that Judah means praise. Am I right? Does Judah mean praise? Do you know your Bible? Judah means praise. When we look into the story about the children of Israel going to possess the promised land, Judah looks over at his brother, Simeon, and he asks Simeon, Simeon, will you join in with me in this battle? Mm -hmm. Why did Judah want Simeon to join him in with the battle? Because Judah knew that his name meant praise and that Simeon meant that God has heard my cry. When you go into warfare, you've got to go into warfare knowing that God's going to hear your praise. Glory to God. That when you know there's, a di there's, there's different kinds of praise. But one particular praise that we're dealing with on tonight is the praise of warfare. Hello now. I, I heard my brother here testify that you were in the armed services. You know that was a, when you heard a certain sound, it was time to run, shoot, and fight. Glory to God. I know in the city where I live, they got the siren, the tornado siren. When the sirens are coming through, uh, they, 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 they send out a horn. And Do they got that here? Well, they need to for the hurricane. <laughs> Somebody say glory to God. There's a sound of warning. And there's a sound of praise that's going on that's being birthed right now from the heavens unto the earth. I thank God for the, for, the, for the man of God, your pastor, that he's heard the voice from God concerning the seven days of praise. Hallelujah. It's time for the saints to get in order. It's time for you to get off your seat of what you did 40 years ago and what you did five years ago and what you did 10 years ago and what you did last year and what you did six months. The question is, what are you going to do right now? Because you won that battle before, but you've got another enemy that's facing you right now. When I think about the Bible, when God called a man Saul to be the first king over Israel, and God told Saul, he told Saul, he said the first command that God gave Saul, he said, Saul, I want you to get up and I want you to go make war against the Amalekites. And he said, God, why do you want me to make war against the Amalekites? And God said, because I have not forgotten how the Amalekites, they attacked you while you was on your way to the promised land. I'm here to let you know on tonight that don't think that without God that you are invincible. The devil has something that he got on you that he can use against you that at the right time and at the right moment, you will go down like a good pudding at a picnic. 
One thing about being saved is not about how long you've been serving God. The question is, are you still serving God? Because you can serve God for a hundred years and act a fool in one night and lose it all. It's not by works that we are saved. Glory to God. So as we can see that, that the children of Israel, they are that the, the enemy Ben Hadab has positioned himself to make war uh, against them. We also can look how that Elijah, the prophet, when he dealt with Ahab in the 15th chapter, how Ahab, how that when he got over to the promised land, and now I'm going to talk about the call of repentance. Because he God told him the children, told the children of Israel, when you get to the promised land, he said, don't let your sons and your daughters mix. Hello now. He said, because if you let them get together, they're going to begin to swap gods. And this is the very thing that Ahab did. Ahab went down to Zidon and married the king's daughter, Jezebel. Am I right? And Jezebel, she was the princess of Baal. And when Ahab married Jezebel, she brought that idolatry into the church. Am I right? And she just wasn't satisfied that she could bring it, but she wanted her religion to be the dominant religion in her city. She killed all those prophets. She was a prophet killer. And they were after Elijah. And God spoke to Elijah to go to Ahab and tell Ahab, according to my words, it shall not be any dew or rain these years until I say so. Well, we know that God sent Elijah by the book chariot and allowed the raven to feed him there day and night. Am I right? And God allowed him to drink from the brook. Didn't he do it? God allowed the brook to dry up. And then God sent him to Zidon. Now, Zidon was a city that belonged to Samaria. God sent him to Zidon, to Zarephath, which is in Zidon, to minister to that widow woman. And God preserved that widow woman for three and a half years in Zarephath, which is in Zidon. Now, Zidon is on the enemy's camp. But God preserved Elijah in the midst of of the enemy's camp. The Bible talks about how that in the last days men's hearts will fail them because of fear. So many people are afraid and upset because we just, what, 20 days or 19 days from the year 2000. I mean, people are really afraid. They're afraid to what the news is saying. They're afraid of what the newspapers are saying and the United Nations are saying. Now, I know we're living in the last days, and the Bible said that there should be wars and rumors of war. But I'm going to let you know that the God that kept your people before you were born, and they brought them into the 1900th century, hello now, into the 20th century, God is going to be the same God that takes us to the next century. I want you to think about something. You're trying to preserve something that, that ain't even 100 years old. Bible said man is born of a days of a few women, uh, 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 born a woman just a few days and those days are full of trouble. Hello now. Most of us know very few people that was alive in 1900. Very few. Computers weren't around. I like what the pastor said. Computers weren't even around back then. Hello now. God didn't get nervous in the Bible when he talks about the last days. God ain't afraid of computers and why should you be? Hello now. But see, that's one thing, I, one thing I do like about this, this situation that, that people get nervous about is that you will pray. See, other than, other, we got, there are more people praying now than ever been praying. More people get thinking about the Lord now than ever thought about God. Hello now, atheists is wanting to get saved now. Hello now. Because all, everything that they had their hope and their trust in is letting them know that you can lose it all. I don't care if you got $50 million in the bank. Hello now, there is the potential if the computer is the only thing that got the record of it. Hello now. Now if your, if your trust is in your money and not in your God, then you have a right to be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Give the Lord a hand clap, everybody. So for three and a half years, there, there's a, this great famine that's going on. And then Elijah one day calls for a showdown. And said, let the God that answers by fire. And how many know that God answers by fire? Hallelujah. Elijah prayed a 63-word prayer. So I'm going to let you know right now, the only thing that's going to bring an end to any destruction and any fear that's in your life is prayer. If you don't pray, you are not going to have any power. If you, if you don't pray, you have no justification. If you don't pray, the devil don't respect you. Hello now. I don't care what organization you belong to. I don't care how many suits you got in your closet. I don't care how many dresses you got in your closet. I don't care how many usher uniforms you got in that closet. I don't care how many choir robes you got lined up on that wall that got your name on every color. It don't mean nothing to the devil. The only thing that the devil respects in your life is the power of God. And even as a husband and a wife, if you don't have the anointing and your husband do, the devil don't respect you. And if your wife got an anointing and you don't, the devil don't respect you. Don't, hello now. Don't respect you. The only thing that the devil is going to reverence is the power of God. The power of God is what will enable you to withstand against all the wiles and the wickedness of the devil. When you look at Ahab, Ahab has sinned greatly before the Lord. And there was a great showdown. And how many know God answered by fire? After God answered by fire, then, then Elijah got nervous. Hello. He got nervous and he ran the wrong way. Somebody say he ran the wrong way. Have you ever saw somebody get nervous and they run the wrong direction? Have you ever been watching a movie and the, and, and, and the lady or the man ran the wrong way and you screaming at the, te at the television, said, no, you big dummy, you're running the wrong way. Hey, did you have a husband that will go the wrong way and won't listen to you and too proud to turn, over, turn around and get off and ask for directions? Don't answer that, especially if he's here. Listen, he got so nervous, he ran and called himself running to, to Mount Hebron, but he's running the wrong way, found himself on a juniper tree. When he's under the juniper tree, the Lord asked him a question. What are you doing under this? Man, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're supposed to be 90 miles down the road in the other direction. What is wrong with you? Some of you call yourself being right, but you're doing the wrong thing and headed in the wrong direction. Hello now. So he told the Lord he felt like giving up. Lord, the, the, he fell into a deep, deep sleep. The angel woke him up, fed him. Fell back to sleep. The angel woke him up again, fed him again. You got a 40-day journey back to where you just left, and then another 40 days to get where you're supposed to be. You got an 80-day journey, and this food, this energy has got to sustain you. But God told Elijah this one thing. And you got to be careful what you say to God. God told, I mean, Elijah told God, I feel like giving up. That's what he told him. He said, I feel like giving up. And what did God tell him? He said, well, since you feel like giving up, well, get on up and get on down the road. And I want you to anoint three people. How many understand the term lame duck? How many know that uh, your current president, Clinton, is a lame duck president? Whether you like him or not, he's lame duck. Well, they get the term lame duck when you're on your last leg or you're on your last term. And according to Congress, he can never, whether you like him or not, he can never be president of the United States of America as long as he lives. And after he dies, either. he will never be president. And this time next year, they will, we have, will have elected somebody else. And a new president will be in office. Am I right? Well, when we look at Elijah, he's a lame duck prophet. He's on his last leg. And he's on his way out. And God told Elijah, he said, I want you to get up. He said, I want you to go anoint uh, three people. I want you to anoint Haziel. Haziel is going to replace Ben-Hadad. I want you to anoint Jehu. Jehu is going to replace the king Ahab. And he said, I want you to anoint Elisha. Because Elisha is going to replace you. It's quiet in here. Matter of fact, it's too quiet. It ain't like December 31st, 11.59 and 59 seconds, is it? 
is too quiet. <laughs> we don't have no lame duck people up in here, do we? Let me speak to you leaders. Don't think that just because you're in a position that God won't replace you. Don't think that that, that seat, that, that office chair, that, 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 that position belongs to you. It don't belong to you. You're operating in an office of administration. And God, yes, might be the one that placed you there. But if you don't do your job, God will replace you. Nobody lives forever. Somebody say glory to God. So God has sent Elijah to go and to anoint three people. Because he's getting rid of both of the kings. And he's getting rid of him as well. Going back over to 1 Kings, where we started from. They're nervous. Nervous. People are nervous now. How many people, you, you talk to the people, they're nervous. They're stowing up water. If you're guilty, raise your hand. You can still go to heaven. You're stowing up water. You are, some of y'all already, uh, you, well, maybe, let me take that back. You've already stored up water. You've stored up gasoline. Y'all done went out and bought generators. The saints done bought a bunch of canned goods. Hold on now. Some people done pulled out old recipes of how to make bread out of just wood and rocks. <laughs> you got recipes from the 17 and 1800s <laughs> that you, you've been practicing because you done got nervous because we are in the last of a century. But I, the last of this millennium, I'm going to let you know that you're not at the end, but you're at the beginning. You're on the verge of a spiritual breakthrough. Yes, the enemy is trying to fight. Yes, the enemy is standing at you toe to toe. Yes, the world is at a state of confusion. No doubt about it, but you are at the, at the verge of a breakthrough. There comes a time when a, when a woman is carrying a child and her water breaks. She's not in trouble. She's on the verge of a breakthrough. Something that she's been waiting on, she's been anticipating on. It's done rolled her back. It's done made her have sleepless nights. But she's on the verge of a breakthrough. Some of you, you've had some battles in your life that you've dealt with this century. You're not going to have to deal with it anymore. Because Jesus is standing on the other side of the promised land. And he's standing there with open arms to let you know that you're going to enter into his promises. How are we going to do it? How are we going to be victorious in this next millennium? What is God speaking to the people? And God gave me this word to this church and to this assembly. And right now, as a man of God, as a prophet of God, I speak to the young people. And I want your undivided attention. There's a story in the Bible that talks about the workers that have labored. Some started early in the morning. And they've been working all day. And some started in noonday. And they've been working. And the owner, the master of the field comes along. There's a group of people just standing around doing nothing. And the man says, well, why aren't you working? Why aren't you doing anything? And they say, because no one has given us work to do. So he tells them, go to the field and work. And they work just but a few hours. And come the end of the day, and it's payday to those that started in the beginning. He paid them, gave them their monies. In the midday, paid them their monies. And then the third group. In the afternoon, he paid them the same amount. And those that had been there since the beginning of the day said, that's not fair. How can you reward them the same thing that you rewarded us when we were the one that have worked all day and sweated in the heat of the day and we've done the majority of the work? How can they have the same portion? I'm speaking to those of you that have been around here for a long time. You got to step aside because that last group in the Bible represents the last call of the young people. God is calling for the young people to get off the wall and get in the field. 
And he's calling for those of you that have been around for a long time. Don't get jealous and don't get envious, but make way and move over because there's new strength that's coming in. Things that you've thought about and dreamed about doing, but you not got old because you and your offer is in your bones. You got arthritis. Hello now. You're dealing with other issues of life. You can't run like you used to. You can't, you, you can't come to the church and work like you used to. But I'm going to let you know that there's still work to do. And if we gather the young folk, if we allow the young folk and teach them and train them, let the mothers train the, little, the young girls. Let the fathers train the sons. Teach them to work in the ministry. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to fight. Because it's these young people that are going to prepare the way for Jesus to return. Some of you, you'll be sleeping with your fathers and Jesus will have to pick you up out the grave. You can't do all the work. But they're strengthening the young people. I'm going back to what I read in the, the beginning. It said, how shall we win this war? And what did, the, what did he say? He said, and he went out, the 15th verse, 1 Kings, the 20th chapter, and he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces. And they were 232. And after them, he numbered all the people, and even all the children of Israel, being 7,000. This was a war that man started, but they got God mad when they opened their mouth because they dared God. They said, your God is a God of the mountain, but your God is not the God of the valley. There's some low things that our young people are dealing with. Our young people are out dealing with issues that you didn't even fantasize about. By the time they reach the age 12 and 13, they've experienced things that you didn't experience until you was 40 years old. Their knowledge is ahead of yours. We're living in a generation, I don't, they say it's in the water, in the food. But the young people are smarter. And because they're smarter than we are, that also lets us to know that if we train them right, they can fight better than we did. They can do more than we did. They can accomplish more than we have. If we teach them how to fight. And God is calling for the church to stand in this day in the power of agreement to push these young people. Some of these young people some, everybody has not fallen into sin. But the enemy is plaguing their minds. They want to serve God. But their flesh is saying something else. That's the same lie that the enemy said in the Bible. Yeah, you can go to church in that choir stand and you can lift your hands and you can rejoice in the mountain. But once you walk outside that door and set your feet back down on planet earth, I got something waiting for you. But our young people need to know that they can go in the midst of a sinful world and not be sinners. They can go in the midst of a sinful world and there can be more of them in number. But when they open their eyes, they can see that the glory of God is around them. And the glory of God is in this church. And you have a strong young group here today. I'm here to let you know, don't, call, don't throw in the towel just yet. Don't get discouraged. Don't be fearful. For God will see you through. He'll give you promotions that you didn't have education for. He'll give you automobiles and houses. And you knew your credit was bad. Somebody say Amen. Amen. I remember some years ago I had some credit issues. I had a student loan that I had not paid. 
Anybody ever been on that page of life? Ray, raise your hand. Because <laughs> I had other important things to do. Well, they, uh, I contacted the school and told them I wanted to pay it. And they said, well, I want to make payment arrangements. They said, well, if you come up with everything at one time, we would knock off this 10 years worth of interest. I said, okay. So I went to the bank and told them I wanted to get a personal loan. I wanted to pay the student loan. And the vice president of the bank said to me, he said, well, well Mr. Barr, you know, you should have had that money saved up in your bank account uh, by now and uh, for your family. And go, he went and going on and so forth. I said, listen. Don't give me all this hoopla. And that's exactly what I said. I said, don't give me all this hoopla. I said, don't you tell me about saving money when I have the opportunity to save my family in now and in the future over 10 years worth of interest on a bill. If that ain't, no, if that ain't a savings, I don't know what is. I, I want to know one answer from you. And forget the hoopla, either yes or no. And when you make up in your mind, then you call me back. Hung up the phone. Called back about seven minutes later. As if he never called the first time. He said, hello, Mr. Barr. I said, hello. As if I hadn't talked to him. He said, I just want to let you know that the loan has been approved. I said, thank you very much. He said, you come on down anytime you need to and get the money. I said, well, I appreciate it. And I sure do. I sure uh, have fine pleasure in doing business with you. Thank you. And have a good day. I was not going to allow the enemy to taunt me about what I had not done. Ahab was, had sinned from the beginning. This is the same Ahab that married Jezebel. But God had made a covenant with his people. That even if you fall into sin, he said, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land and I will forgive their sin. God's name's sake. His name is on the line. That's why he's going to do it. Because too many people know that you're saved. Hello now. Too many people know that you've been running the race. And God is not going to let the devil make a fool out of his name. Somebody say amen. So you've got to stir up your faith. You would have got to get tenacious in your spirit. And you got to make up in your mind, I am not defeated. But I am victorious. Because God is on my side. It's time to stop playing with this thing. And realize that it's more powerful than dynamite. It's more powerful. The power of God is, is, is more stronger than if you stood outside with a metal rod in a terrible lightning storm. It's more powerful than that. And the people of God need to know that they are somebody. I want to pray for just a few people on tonight. Brother Shane, come. Let me pray for you. You and your wife. Hallelujah. I want you, all of the church, just begin to worship the Lord. Come on now. We're standing in the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to ask that no one would leave, please. Bear with us just a few moments more. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My brother, the Lord has heard your supplications. He's seen your heart cry. God sees it all. He knows it all. And the Lord is telling me to tell you this one thing. He said, my son and my daughter, do not fear. God has his hand up on your lives. There's an anointing here and there is a ministry here. And God is going to use you greatly. And God is going to give you an anointing to even lead the young people. 
I see many of the young brothers coming to you and pulling you aside and asking for prayer and asking for advice and asking for wisdom. God said, don't let your heart be overcharged with the responsibilities. He said, because I won't put anything on you that you cannot bear. He said, I will give you the strength to stand and to work. The Lord said that, that you've been charged to do. He said, be found faithful in it. But when God chose David, that little shepherd boy, he was out in the field tending to the sheep. He was doing the work that his father had charged him to do, and his heart was in it. And he loved those old dirty, smelly sheep, old dumb sheep. He loved them. And he even was willing to give his life for them. Fought a lion and a bear. He learned in his youth that that same God that gave him the ability to fight and win against the lion and the bear, when he stood before the giant, he realized it was the same God that was strengthening him and that he could not wear Saul's armor. He had to know God for himself. And I speak to your home right now. I send the peace of God and a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. I bind every plan, every seed of the enemy. And I speak the peace of God over your home, over your marriage, over your ministry, over the children. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. The Lord is your strength. I see God taking his hand and placing his hand up under both your feet. And he's telling me to tell you that I am your foundation. I will preserve you. I will keep you. I will lead you. I will send you. I will guide you. The things God has placed upon your spirit. And you say, well, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? And what I got this to do and I got that to do. God, how am I, how am I, how am I? And the Lord said, be at peace, my son. For you shall accomplish everything that I have placed before you. Oh, yes. And God's going to show you how to minister to this man of God. He's going to show you how to war against when the enemy fight him. He's going to show you how to do it. Because you're going to stand. Oh, yes, you are. And we reverse every assignment of the devil against this couple, this marriage, this home, and this ministry. In the name of Jesus, man, give your wife a hug. Minister to them. I want the entire church to stand. And I want you to stretch your hands this way. And impart strength into them. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Oh yes. Peace, 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 peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Your father loves you. Oh, yes. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Dobbs, can you and your wife come? Y'all stand right. And I want you to lay hands on your daughter, mother, and I want you to lay hands on your son. Yes, Lord Jesus. This is a great ministry here. This is a great church. And God is going to raise up great anointed people out of this church. Young man, God has his hand upon you. God has anointed you. I don't know you, don't know anything about you. But his anointing is upon your life. The call of the ministry is on your life. And you study that word. 
I mean, you get at it. I see you standing up preaching the gospel, and I see the word of God just rolling off your lips and going outward. In, I see as you speak like a sword coming out of your mouth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your other hand and say, Lord, I'll do your will. In the name of Jesus, we cover him now. In the name of Jesus. Worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord, everybody. Worship him. Whatever your need is, lift your hands towards God and begin to tell him about it. And let him begin to minister to your personal need. A lot of you young folk. I want all the young people. If you're 20 year, 21 years old or younger. I want you to come down to this altar. Please come quickly. If you're 21 years old or younger. Hallelujah. Come, come, come. This ain't the model runway. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. This is a, a diversified youth group you all have here. I want you to join hands. Pastor Dobbs, I see in this youth ministry right here, don't, don't know them, don't know anything they do. I, I know about the play. That's all I know. But I see in this group, this assembly right here, I see preachers, I see evangelists, I see pastors, I see gospel singers. Let me share something with you all that the Lord gave me understanding. Each one of you are different. There's something that every day you dream about doing, and your dream and his dream are not the same thing. You may wake up in the morning, and you may think about, oh, I want to be an engineer. You may say, I want to be a doctor. You may say, I want to be a lawyer. You may say, I want to be a, a nurse. Or you may say, you may say, I want to be a nurse. You may say, I want to be a preacher. I mean, you may say, I want to be a, 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 a physicist or an astronaut. Whatever you dream about doing, I want you to understand this. That's a part of what God himself, he placed a portion of himself inside each of you. Because when you look at creation, God had to, to be an astronaut. He had to be one to understand what we call astrology. He had to be an engineer. He had to be a, a, a scientist. He had to be... Amen. One that understands chemistry. He had to understand uh, 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 aquatic things. Am I right? He had, to, uh, he had to be a horticulturist. That's one, the study of plants. Am I right? He had to be a herbologist. He had to be all these things. He himself to make this world. And when God created us in his image... He divided himself amongst each of us. How many follow what I'm saying? That's why everybody don't need to be d lawyers. What if everybody in here was a lawyer? Half y'all probably go to hell for lying. <laughs> <Am I? laughs> but he's placed even in this group right here, diversity. And you can be you. And still be you. Because you can't, you can't be, can't nobody beat you being you. But whatever it is, see, when I was a child, there's two things I dreamed about. Preaching and singing. But two things. And that's something that's in my spirit. And yes, there are other things that I do. But ministry is the, my main point. Why? Because that was the thing that was prophesied over me before I ever was brought into this world. And others of you have received the same word from God. 
You know your calling. But whatever gift and whatever thing that you do is not what God, the gift God placed in you is not going to be a gift to sin. Amen. God ain't going to have you, amen, serving him and mixing drinks. Am I right? God ain't going to have you serving him and you selling cigarettes. The gift that God placed within you, let it be a gift and use it into a place where it can glorify God in whatever you do. Because that's a gift that God placed within you. Let us pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. This great body of young people that is represented here tonight. And God, we know this is not all of them. God, I thank you for them. For these are the young people that you have called to lead this church, this ministry in the forefront of the next millennium. For these are they that shall make war with the enemy. These are they that you've called into intercession and into fasting and into praying and into the study of the word, God. These are they, the next generation of the new millennium. There shall be those that with lifted up hands receive you in your second return. I thank you, Father. And I bind the assignment and the plan of the enemy that have been set against them. We rebuke all fear. We rebuke the spirit of lust. In the name of Jesus. That will attack them. We, re we rebuke the spirit of curiosity. That will cause them to falter. And to sway. But let their hearts and their minds and their affections. Be set upon you dear God. For these are your children for you have no grandchildren you only have children and I thank you in Jesus name everybody say amen I want you young people to look at your brothers and your sisters and I want you to tell them I will be your strength say it like you mean it I'm going to pray for you. Say it like you, come on. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know you young folk. I know y'all listen to Kirk Franklin. How many people listen to Kirk Franklin? Y'all close your eyes. How many of y'all listen to Kirk Franklin? <laughs> glory, glory. Now you know. What I'm saying is this. We get loud and radical outside the church. Some of y'all are class clowns. And I ain't talking about because you look like it. Some of you cut a rug. Some of you loud in the hallway, loud in the neighborhood. Loud when you're waking up, loud when you're going to sleep. But when we come to church, we're so quiet. Ain't nobody going to shoot you. I encourage the young people to be loud and boisterous for God. Let the devil know you are not ashamed. How many understand what I'm saying? How many football players we have? You play football, whether on the team or in your mind. You play football. <laughs> How many play basketball? I heard some of y'all were loud out back for church started. It's all right to be loud in church. It's all right to, as the Bible said, lift up your voice like a trumpet inside. I'd rather, uh, listen, I, I raise my voice in church and keep it quiet at home. I don't lie on no howling in my house. Look at how y'all looking at me. I have peace in my house. Somebody say glory to God. I love you. God bless you. Pastor Dobbs, won't you come? Thank you for allowing me to minister to you in this time of the season. Amen. Bless